What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be doing a quick tutorial of how to connect this bad boy right here, the Shao RP2040, which is a small development board based on the RP2040 microcontroller, a very popular development board used in the Raspberry Pi Pico and Pico W models. And we'll be setting this up with the MPU650s to start getting readings by the end of this video using that with MicroPython and Thonium. So that's everything we'll be doing at a high level. That being said, let's jump into it. Okay, so the first step is just your physical connection. So you just need four jumper wires to make a connection between the MP650 and the Shao RP2040. So as you can see here, just do exactly what I did in this diagram. We have VCC to this pin right here, and we have ground to ground, and of course we have SCL and SDA to P6 and P7 respectively. So the reason they say P6 is because this is what we're gonna call it in MicroPython, and we're gonna find this as six in MicroPython. And then and the other one we're gonna find as seven in MicroPython. So these are just the, the MicroPython numbers here which, that you see in gray. So you can see that label right here. The next thing you wanna do is just go to Thani and download the Thani ID if you don't have it. So I'm just gonna to go to Thani.org and show you it's really easy. It's on the first page. I have a Mac, so I just click Mac and I go through the whole installation process. Should be fairly quick to do that. Okay, so the next thing you wanna do is obviously open Thani. And once Thani is open, I still haven't had my device plugged in with the USB-C to my computer. But before I do that, I'm just gonna to go to options here because I'm gonna assume uh, for the sake of this video that you haven't even uh, installed MicroPython on this device. So to get MicroPython onto the Shao RP2040, you're just gonna to wanna to go to interpreter. You're gonna to wanna to go to install or update MicroPython. Now, because it's not plugged in, you can't see anything here. Now, what you're gonna wanna do before you plug it in is you're gonna wanna hold the boot cell button and then plug it in at the same time. So if you don't know what that button is, it's this little button right here. It's hard to see, it's hard to click, especially if you have big uh, hands like me, uh, but you can still click it and it's not really noticeable at face value, but it is there. So you're gonna go ahead and just hold that while you're plugging it in. So I'm gonna do that off the screen here. Um, having an issue with my big hands, my huge thumbs, okay. Plugging it in, you should see it pop up. There we go. And then I'm just going to install the MicroPython variant. We're just gonna install the Pico, Pico H variants, and we're just gonna hit install. Great, now we're just gonna click done. Should be good to go in terms of MicroPython, so we're just gonna hit okay. Okay, so the next thing you wanna do is get the library code. It's on my GitHub page. I found this library code online. I didn't write this. I think it's a really popular library code to use the MPU650, so we're just gonna copy this vector3d.py. We're gonna copy the code and the name of the file. So let's just copy this guy. So let's do shift. So just copy the whole thing. So let's just copy it in like this, new file, vector3d.py. Copy all the contents in. Once again, I didn't write this library, but uh, I wanna give credit where credit's due. I think uh, Sebastian Plummer, uh, good job. So. Uh, we have another library we have to copy. It's the IMU library. So you need both of these libraries to get this thing working with the code I'm about to show you. So once again, I'm just copying the, the contents in. What am I doing? Okay. So once again, I just name exactly the same thing. And the reason I'm doing it like this is because I have an issue locally where I can't copy files into my device in Thani. Once again, another very finicky aspect of Thani. But so I'm just copying it manually. I'm just gonna go ahead and save that. So those are the two libraries we need. And you can do a lot of cool things with this library. I'll show you one thing here in a second. Besides getting values, you can actually change the range of the values you can get, but we'll show that in a second. The last thing you'll need is the actual code, the sample code I have, which is main MPU. So we're just gonna copy that in. This, you can name whatever you want. So we're just gonna say, let's call it main MPU.py, okay? create a new file, we copy that from my GitHub page, which I'll link in the description below. So if you did everything correct and I copied everything correct, we should start getting values here. Okay, so that's what we're getting. We're getting all six degrees of freedom. So we're getting acceleration, um, AX, AY, AZ, that's measured in Gs. So this is 0.8 Gs. And then this is measured in, so GX, GY, GZ are me measured in degrees per second. And finally, we have temperature in degrees Celsius. So the MPU650 can actually give you temperature. It's not super accurate, but it is there. Not a lot of people use it. And so that's pretty much how you do it. You can change this. You don't have to round. And also another thing you can change that I mentioned, because that library code is pretty powerful, you can actually change the range of acceleration you can get from the readings. So right now with my 
with the base library, I can only get readings of Gs between zero and two Gs. So no matter how fast I move this accelerometer right now, it won't go above two. So I actually have to increase the uh, acceleration range here so I can actually uncomment this. So I'm just gonna stop. And I'm just going to save it. I'm going to rerun it and move my accelerometer again really quickly. So I'm moving it really quickly. You can see I started getting accelerations above two. And you can do the same thing for the gyro range. All of those details are left in the, the library itself. So if you go to imu.py, so if I stop this and I'll show you this code. So let's go down here to find that. So we can see acceleration range. So you can see I set it to two before, and that means I could start getting ranges of up to eight Gs if I set the acceleration range to two. And if we go, we can, if we set the gyro range to two, we can start getting degrees per second up to a thousand degrees per second. So if you have highly strenuous applications, this would be a good fit for you. So that's pretty much it in terms of getting started with MPU values from the MPU 650, reading it from the Xiao RP2040, this nice, cute little device. I hope that video was useful to you guys. If it was, please like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, guys, stay tuned.